All right. Sorry about the lighting situation. It's a little bit dark, but that's because it's almost midnight. Anyways, so I'm getting some really good uh, anti-material lately from all these different people emailing me. But I'm just going to respond to uh, respond to one in particular. So he's got like a whole list, and I'll throw it up there for you. I'm very good friends with an ex-Mormon. He told me everything that goes into your endowment ceremony. He was a member for 40 years and born into the cult. He is now an atheist. Sorry to hear that he's an atheist. But the church will say he's lying, I'm sure. But pre-1990, they threatened to kill you or hurt you. Does that sound like something Jesus would do? He also showed me the temple garment. Do you really believe those protect you? That's just silly. I know for a fact that Mormons tell these stories of soldiers going to war and bullets not penetrating or people dying in airplane crashes and where their body part was, was covered wasn't burnt or damaged because I've heard these stories with my own ears. I've read your Book of Mormon cover to cover. It says there were horses and elephants here. That's completely false. Have you ever heard of anyone going to Zarahemla or Nephi or Bountiful? Where are all these great cities that Nephi built? Why is there no archaeology to support it? Why does it say in Alma 7.10 that Jesus was born in Jerusalem? We all know he's born in Bethlehem. Why do you teach that we, as a people, can become gods, when clearly it says in the Bible that there were no gods before him, and there will be none after? Why does the LDS believe in Jesus and Satan are brothers? Why does the Mormon Church say milk before meat, which means to lie people to join false, man-made religion, and maybe reveal the truth of the doctrine later? Brigham Young ordered the Mountain Meadow Massacre. Bishops down there stopped people from Arkansas, took their guns away and shot 120 men and women and children dead for no reason. Yeah, that's a prophet of God. Joseph Smith shot and killed two people through a door at Carthage and smuggled a pistol before they shot him and he fell out the window. A prophet murders people? I'm only presented well-documented facts and asking you legit questions. Of course, old Monson and co. in Salt Lake don't want you to know this stuff, because if you did, you'd quit paying tithing which I don't know how you can pay 10% of your income and not have any accounting where it goes. But Jesus needs his malls built in Salt Lake City, $5 billion, one that I'm sure you helped pay for. Hope to hear back from you. Well, my friend, you will hear back from me. So, I'm sure that on a Saturday night you do nothing but read anti-Mormon literature and all of those great facts he presented that were well-documented most of them aren't really well documented or facts, but anyways, I'm gonna say take take time to say thank you. Um, you you talked about the endowment ceremony a little bit of when I was two years old, the changes that were made, and I couldn't tell you firsthand about those changes, but um, if your friend uh, told you that that the Mormon Church is gonna kill you if you tell you about the different endowment ceremonies and then he told you but he's still alive and obviously that's not true that the Mormon church doesn't go around killing people because your friend told you so must not be true um, but one thing I do know is everything you do learn in the temple is about spiritual growth I would assume um, anything that you've heard about the temple or the principles are more about being willing to die for the cause of Christ, not actually dying, but being willing to stand up for Jesus Christ in anything, any way, shape, or form, even if it meant laying down your life like many others have in the past, many past prophets and apostles that have, have died because of, of what they stood for. And I'm pretty sure that's what that, that promise that your friend made, um, being willing to lay down his life for the cause of Christ. And hopefully that never has to happen. Hopefully no one has to die. But um, standing up for God and what you believe in is, is definitely something that is, is good. As far as the garment goes, I've also heard many stories of people being saved from physical harm. I haven't experienced it myself firsthand, but I wouldn't venture to call people liars just because I haven't experienced what they've experienced. Many cultures and religions have religious symbols and different memorabilia to remind them of who they are, what they stand for, promises that they've made. Um, you got to think of Hasidic Jews, Islam, Catholic priests. Um, the way I see it is the garment is similar to a wedding ring that I wear on my finger, this little guy right here.
Bing. Um, symbolism to me of, of the eternal promise that I've made with my wife to to always be with her, to help her, to honor her, to strengthen her. And uh, it's just a constant reminder every day that of who I am and what I stand for with our with regards to our marriage. And a garment is very similar. It's a reminder of promises we made with God and, and consistently a reminder of, of where we stand and promises that we have and, and is a strength. And you got to think of the different the amount of power that comes from that every day that you're putting it on. Um, I've you've mentioned that the Book of Mormon mentions different animals or places that aren't around now, or there's no evidence of such. Um, you used Zarahemla, Nephi, Bountiful as as examples. There's I don't know there's it's just kind of a, a silly thing to ask because there's thousands of civilizations that have risen and fallen throughout the centuries, throughout the millennia, whatever, throughout the thousands of years uh, that have disappeared, that have changed. You know, um, you got to think of even when the Native Americans were here, yeah, it wasn't called New York, wasn't New York, uh, Albuquerque, maybe it was Albuquerque, but cities change, names change. There's plenty of cities in South and Southern America that have similarities with LDS scripture. They've they've never determined of a specific one or which one was which, but there are a lot of locations that that are similar. And if you want to go down there and look and talk to different archaeologists, I'm I'm sure that they will also um, verify some things that are similar and verify a lot of other things that aren't. But um, the point is, is that just because you haven't heard of someone going to Bountiful doesn't mean that there isn't an ancient civilization called Bountiful or was called Bountiful. That's a silly thing. Um, you you got, had a big qualm with Alma 711 saying that uh, Jesus was born at Jerusalem. Um, if you look at the definition of at, that means like near or around. Um, I think Bethlehem is within five miles of Jerusalem and a general feeling is that the people knew about Jerusalem because that's where they had heard stories. I mean, this is hundreds of years later. None of them have been to Bethlehem or Jerusalem. So they're telling stories about where they came from. They came from Jerusalem and they're saying, yeah, Jesus was born really close to where we came from. They were born at Jerusalem. Obviously, if what you say is true, that Joseph Smith just fabricated the book, I think he would know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So to say that he was born at Jerusalem, it's not that big of a deal. You can qualm with it all you want, but it's it's like me saying that my son was born at Salt Lake City, but really he was born in Mill Creek, which is just a little suburb of Salt Lake City, which both of them are accurate. Um, you got really upset about Jesus Christ and being Satan being brothers. So question, where do you think Satan comes from? Obviously, Satan's a creation of God. We're creations of God. Jesus Christ is a creation of God. And so in that sense, God is all of our fathers. And so people get all upset. Ooh, Jesus and Satan are brothers. That means that Satan's as powerful as Jesus. No, I'm a brother with Satan. I'm a brother with Jesus. Because God is the creator. God is our father. He's the one that made us into being. So it's, uh, from your from your logic, it sounds pretty weird, but it's kind of normal when you think about it. That Oh yeah, God is the creator of everything. God is the creator of the world. And that's all you need to know. Is God, commanded, God commanded Jesus to come down and to build this earth. And Satan could have had his own roles, but he decided to rebel and to choose a different path. Um, you talked about milk before meat. You got upset because you teach milk before meat, line upon line, precept upon precept. There's plenty of different parables throughout the scriptures that that teach uh, that Jesus Christ teaches in the same way. He teaches people based on their understanding. He might teach them about sowing seeds. Um, but really, he's not teaching about sowing seeds. He's, he's teaching the people that are ready and prepared to listen to the meat that's there. So it's it's not a, 
a new principle that Mormons just made up to teach in parables or to teach people as as they're learning. If you walked up to a, a Buddhist or a Hindu person, uh, do you think it would be more effective teaching them about the Savior, or do you think it would be more effective just to go up there and tell them that they're worshiping all these gods and they're going to hell immediately? I think it would be probably more effective just to go up there and to begin by teaching them who Jesus Christ was and why he's important, what his role play, what his role is in, in the world, and then you can go on and teach them that worshiping idols or go on and t teach them about worshiping false gods or whatever you wanted to teach them. But I I don't know how how that doesn't sound logical to you. Anyways. Um what else did he say? So it's uh, just the same thing on the lines. It's not a matter of secrecy, but practicality. You should You should learn addition and, and subtraction before and you learn how to do quantum mechanics, right? Um, it was pretty funny when you said that Brigham Young ordered those people to, to die because he didn't. Um, the only... The only thing that we have from Brigham Young that, of what he said about the Mountain Meadow Massacre is, is exactly this. He said, in regard to the immigration trains passing through our settlements, we must not interfere with them until they are first notified to keep away. You must not meddle with them. The Indians we expect will do as they please, but you should try and preserve good feelings with them. There are no other trains going south that I know of. Those are there, we will leave them go in peace. So, you specifically said that Brigham Young ordered the people to die, which the only record we have of him saying anything was completely opposite. He said, let them go, don't kill them. So, um, you also said that it was all the Mormons that killed them, when it's very well documented that it was the Indians that killed them. There's also documents that said that they were in cahoots, that I don't know the whole story there, but obviously it was a, a bad thing to happen. But the main underlying thing is it wasn't condoned by the church. It wasn't something that the church said was okay. It was just a bad decision by people that that were fearing their own lives because they were running out of food, and and so they made some poor decisions. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to justify what happened. But I'm just gonna tell you that it wasn't ordered by Brigham Young. Um, you got mad about Joseph Smith bringing a gun into Carthage jail. So it was the 1800s. I don't think anyone in around that time frame going in the Western area didn't have a gun on them. I'm pretty sure that it was like standard issue. Um, but you also think it's bad to defend yourself. You think it's bad to defend yourself when people are trying to kill you? I think, like, I don't know, did Peter attempt to kill a man who tried to seize Jesus? Um, did David kill Goliath? I don't know, there's a lot of different stories in the scriptures about people that were being attacked or people that were that were going to die and, and they defended themselves. It's, I don't know, it's not that unheard of. Um, of course, a perfect person, such as Jesus Christ, would would turn the other cheek and allow them to to kill them without raising, you know, without batting an eye. But we are all imperfect, including prophets, and we don't put prophets on the same pedestal as as Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was and and is the only perfect being to ever walk the earth, and that's that's that. So of course, um, I don't think that. Defending, I mean, if someone came in to kill me, I know I would defend myself. And I don't think that just because someone's a prophet that we should put them on a pedestal next to Jesus Christ. I don't think that's, I don't think that's right. Um, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of good people that would do the same. So, um, You said you were only presenting well-documented facts and asking legit questions. I don't know that, that you are. Um, your facts are, are tinted with ignorance and ridicule, prejudice, and a lot of bias. You 
talked about tithing, how the Mormons required to pay 10%. In Malachi 3.10, it's about tithing. It'll teach you a little bit. It's from the Bible. It's It's been around for a while. It's not just something the Mormons made up. Um, talked about how Monson and Co. don't want us to know these things. La, la, la. No. And mm, probably the majority of the information you got started off with like an LDS source. So if they didn't really want you to know it, then it wouldn't be there. Um, but unfortunately, if most, I guess most of the time that information has been skewed by a third party and intended to take it out of context and make it seem like we're the worst people on earth. But I think if you like go hang out with some Mormons, you probably, you know, probably like them and probably realize, oh, they don't have horns and, and the magic underwear isn't really that big of a deal. It's just like an undershirt. I guess they're not that weird. But if you want to keep thinking that we're villains and we're Satan worshippers, then yeah, there's not much I can do. Um, the mall, it's actually an interesting story about the mall because the Mormons actually invented the first mall. Did you know that? ZCMI? Um, what was it? Z Zion's Corporate <laughs> Mercantile Industries or something like that? Anyways, ZCMI was the first shopping mall in the world. And it was invented when Mormons were the only people out here. Um, where the where the mall sits today was the location of of the, that mall, the main um, one of the main portions of the mall. And back when the Olympics came, there was the Gateway Mall that got built on the other part of downtown Salt Lake, and so it kind of put that mall out of business. But then the church saw that everywhere downtown was kind of going downhill, as most cities do, they, they rise and fall and property values go up, they go down and then they get rebuilt and just kind of a natural cycle of cities if you look into that. And so I guess kind of as a tribute back to paying back to the society that already had built up that part of the church, um, they did a huge renovation down there. And Part of it was a mall that, that they don't run. It's a different company that runs it. Um, but there was also a lot of housing that went down there, a lot of new apartments that went down there. But you'll be glad to know that tithing wasn't used. There's uh, a different branch of the church that, that ran that. I think tithing for that branch was used like over 100 years ago, but since then it's just um, been growing, basically. So... Anyways, that was a long video. Um, tithing wasn't used for those those buildings. That was um, financed by a for-profit end of the church and pays taxes and it's not exempt or anything. So tithing and fast offerings primarily go to building of churches, temples, and to feeding sick and hungry people around the world. So I... I went to a missionary training meeting tonight that was pretty fun. We got to share experiences about um, just how the work's going, and I feel it's going really good in our area. So I encourage you to pray and to ask God if if anything that the church teaches is true. I know it's going to be hard, harder with the different um, negative stereotypes and different things that you've read. Um, but if you can kind of put those things back, maybe think in the Bible about the kids that called the man bald and he told the she-bear to come down and eat them. You know, there's a lot of weird things that happen throughout the history and a lot of weird things that happen in the gospel that we can't really comprehend. So with that in mind, just know that you're not going to be able to understand everything of God and some of the stories you've heard that sound weird to you, maybe just don't understand them fully and put your full trust in God and ask him if... The Book of Mormon is true. I'm asking if uh, the Mormons have something have something here. And he'll tell you. He'll guide you. And you'll feel impressions by the Spirit and what to do. So, God bless you, and I hope to hear from you again soon.